morning uh, so welcome it is an honor for me to talk to you and i am from, i am jagme from class 9 from school on the jenny school of excellence and i wanted to ask you a question about how covid is changing everybody's thinking in quarantine everybody was you know uh, really depressed that what is going to be and how do we stay positive and in this time how do we deal with this yeah, it's a great question, Jasma. And uh, I know uh, we're, we're neighbors of sorts, so uh, we're also in Sodipat, so it's great to hear from you. Thank you. Um, I think, uh, again, it's a, a difficult issue that a lot of people are wrestling with right now. So first, uh, we do know there's lots of data showing that both uh, mood disorders, that means depression primarily, and anxiety disorders have almost doubled worldwide since uh, COVID really came to prominence back in February, March of 2020. Um, a lot of this is social anxiety because you're sort of isolated, but you're also in very close contact to people around you, right? Family and other people where you may uh, have very little opportunity to get some alone time. So a lot of people have really struggled with these uh, social anxiety and other issues. Now, as we are beginning to reemerge from the pandemic, there are other people now that are having anxiety related to that, right? Well, I've been inside for the last year and a half. I've been working from home or I've been studying from home. Some people are very uncomfortable about going back out in public, having to re-engage with people. And so there are a lot of issues, uh, both regard to uh, depression and anxiety that people are really struggling with. And so I think there's a number of different ways that we can try to um, ameliorate some of those effects. One is simply the recognition that, you know, I'm struggling. Um, one of the things in India that I think uh, is true for many countries in the world is there is often a reticence to admit that, you know, a person is having troubles, that I need help. There's also this stigmatization still with regard to mental illness. Um, so I, I want to be very clear that when we talk about depression or anxiety or any of these other types of mental illness, right, whether it's a, a psychosis such as schizophrenia or a personality disorder or an eating disorder or substance abuse, right, the thing people need to understand, and I'm talking here as this behavioral neuroscientist, is all of these exert changes in your brain, right? This is due to abnormalities, both in terms of the structure and the chemical balance in your brain. And so there is real no difference between suffering from um, these sort of mental distress or mental illness than there would be if you had an ulcer or intestinal issues, right? It's all rooted in our biology. And so there should be absolutely no reason why anybody should feel uh, inferior or uh, concerned that by admitting I'm struggling, that, you know, look, hey, I'm, I'm dealing with some depression or I'm feeling this stress and anxiety. Right, that's a normal consequence of what we've been through. Uh, you know, the world has never seen this. These are really historical times. They will be talking about these times that we're living in, these decades, or excuse me, these years. They'll be discussing this for probably decades, if not centuries, to come. And so, to come back, Jasmine, I think the first thing is again that recognition to say, "I do need help." Uh, if able, reach out to somebody that can help. A professional would be great. But if that's not available, reach out to your family, right? Tell them, that, look, you know, I'm struggling. Is there anything that you can do? And even if they can just empathize or sympathize, you know, that in and of itself can also be beneficial for the person. It's also important that when you are doing what you're doing as a student, that I talked earlier about this idea, you're living at home, you're doing your online classes, you know, talk to your parents and say, I need some segregation, right? This part of my room, this is for study time, right? When I'm working here, this is the time for me to focus and really pay attention to my classes. I know I have chores and other things that you want me to do, but you really need to be able to carve out that time where you can say, this is school time, this is family time, this is chore time, et cetera. And finally, the last point I would say is that you really need to, uh, again, not just the family relationships, but as we're beginning to open back up, to really reach out to those old relationships that may have fallen by the wayside. Uh, I know for myself, certainly, uh, it's been difficult to maintain those relationships over the last, you know, again, 18, 20 months. 
Online talking is fine, but it's not the same, right? I think everybody out there recognizes that. So if you have close friends, if you have others that you can come together, we know that physical proximity, right? Having a friend that you can talk to and you can hug, that is actually as good as therapy in many respects. And so I think that ultimately for all of the students and the young people out there, um, you know, please don't get discouraged. Please don't think that this is something that's wrong with you. This is a normal process that many people, many, many people will experience in their lifetime. And so it's really incumbent upon that person, the student or whoever is suffering to really try to be proactive. Now I say that, and I recognize that there's a bit of a misnomer here. Um, if you are depressed, Part of that is feeling a bit apathetic, not wanting to engage in the world. And so I recognize that. And that's why, again, I think that that social system in place, having others that are looking out for you, that can reach out and check on you is so important right now. Definitely, I agree. We should accept that we are suffering with something or not.